Hi, today we're going to learn about logarithmic function. In this section, I will go over the graphing of logarithmic function and the properties of logarithmic functions. And I'm going to do an application problem involving a continuous compounding problems. So first, let's start. Go, let's go over the properties of log, logarithmic functions. So for a is greater than 0 and a does not equal 1, so a cannot be 1 and it has to be positive, the logarithmic function with the base of a is, den is denoted as f of x equals log base a times x, where log base a x is if and only if a to the y equals x. So um, this is a very important rule, this rule right here, because we're going to use this rule in a lot of problems. So, whoops. So that's important to know. So now, the prop, some of the properties of log or logarithmic function is that the logarithmic function f of x equals log base of a has the following property. So the function f is increasing for a is greater than 1 and decreasing when a is greater, greater than 0, less than 1. So it's kind of like the exponential function. Um, the only difference is that the x-intercept, we have an x-intercept of the graph and it's it start, usually starts at 1 comma 0. Remember in the exponential function um, that we only had a y-intercept of 0 comma 1. So it's so basically logarithmic and exponential function are pretty much inverses. And then the graph has the y-axis as a vertical asymptote. And then I'll, go, I'll show you in a minute how the graph will look like and this probably will make all sense. So it has a um, va as the y-axis. And then the domain of f is 0 to positive infinity, and the range is is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Also, the function is 1 to 1. So let's go over the graph of a typical logarithmic function. So let's say you're given g of x equals log base 2 of x. So we know that the base, the a, is 2, so we know it's increasing, right, because from this rule, if it's greater than 1, it's it's um, increasing. What else do we know? We know it's um, we know it has an x-intercept of one comma zero, right? So here's one comma zero, and we know it's increasing, so it's going to look like this. And we also know it's um, it has a y-axis on the um, it has it has a um, vertical asymptote on the y-axis. So right here, as you can see. This part gets really close to the y, but never gets it never touches the y-axis, so that's why it's a horizontal. I mean, a vertical asymptote. So just remember, remember the exponential graph. It looked something like this. It had a y-intercept of zero comma one. Remember, this is a typical y equals e to the x. So they're pretty much inverses. So this is, um, yeah, they're pretty much inverses. So let's do one where it's, and also um, the function is one to one. So if you look at this graph, log base two, if you remember how to determine if it's a function is one to one, is you do a horizontal line test, right? If it hits it more than once, then it's not one to one. If it just hits it once, it's one to one. So it does pass the um, horizontal line test. So let's do a decreasing logarithmic function. So let's say you are given base of log base one half x. So it hasn't. It still has an x-intercept of one comma zero, right? But this time it's decreasing, so it's going to look like this. It still has the y-axis as a horizontal vertical asymptote, right, VA, and then it's uh, it's still 1 to 1 because if it still passes the horizontal line test, it only hits it once. Um, the domain is from 0 to positive infinity, as you can see. It starts, it gets because of the horizontal, the um, vertical asymptote, so it starts, it gets really close to 0, but it never touches, that's why it's parentheses. And the same here, it's um, 0, 
comma pause at infinity and then the range is from negative infinity as you can see it's all real numbers it keeps it'll keep on decreasing and it'll keep on in increasing on the y-axis so that's some of the properties and and then the one-to-one -one property of logarithm property of log logarithmic log property of one-to-one -one property of logarithms it's basically saying that it's just like the exponential function when you have the same base right here as you can see uh, they have the same base of log base a log base a you just ignore it and then bring down whatever it's left over so you're left with um x1 and then you set that to, you just bring it down set that to equal to each other and that's pretty much the one-to-one -one property and then the we saw, remember from this, um, from the exponential function, PERT, if it's, co if it's um, continu compounding continuously, then this is an example of a logarithmic function because it's um, compounding continuously, and then I'll show you a problem. So let's start with the first problem. Let's start doing problems. So let's say it says find the indicated, indicated value of the logarithmic function of log base one fifth of one twenty five. So what do we know? We know that our A equals one fifth and then our X equals one twenty five. Okay, let me go back to this rule. Remember this rule we're going to use this rule, log base a. So I'm going to write, rewrite this rule. So y equals log base a of x. If and only if a to the y equals x. a to the y equals x. Okay. So, what? Tell me, tell, which way do you think? Look at this graph. Which way is it? An example of this. Does it look like this, or does it look like this? It looks really close to like this, right? The only difference is it's missing a y, so we can add a y because we go set this to equal to y. So if this looks like this, then we should make, we have to figure out what's our a and what's our y and what's our x. So our a is the base, which is one fifth. Our x is what's ever inside the um, parentheses, so it's 125. And our y is just y, right? y is y. So let's put in this form, a to the y equals x. So a is 1 fifth, x is 125. No, our y is just y, right? We, it's just y. So y equals y. And then, whoops equals x. We set our x as 125. Okay, so we have this. Let's try to get the same base as one another. Let's put everything in the base of 5. So on the right, this 125, we can rewrite it as 5, third, five to the third power, right? Because it has a base of 5, and then if you raise that to 3, you get 125. Now this one is a little bit tricky. Um, this is one fifth raised to the y, so I can rewrite it as five negative one, but I'm going to raise it to the y power, right? Can't forget about the y, so I'm going to raise that to the y power. Now, remember what the rule for if you have an exponent raising to the um, power, what do you do? You multiply it. So, remember. Um, x cubed, raise it to the second power. It's not x to the fifth, it's actually x to the sixth. So we're going to do the same process. So this is going to be 5 to the negative y equals 5 to the thirds. Good, now we have the same base, 5 and 5. Remember, when you have the same base, you could just ignore the 5 and just bring down whatever's, bring down the exponent. So we have, we can rewrite this as negative negative y equals 3 and then let's solve for y so we're going to divide everything by negative 1 
So y equals negative 3. Now, um, you, you, the last step is to check it. So wherever, um, let's put it back in here. So we said that y equals negative 3. So you can actually put it here. It doesn't really, for the, you can put it here so or here. Let's put it in here. Does one one fifth to the negative three equals one twenty five? So one fifth to the negative three. Let's put that in positive. So that's like one over one fifth raise it to the positive third power equals one twenty five. So that's like saying one over one over one twenty five. And that should equal 125. Okay, so let's um, do parentheses. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 125. And then you should get 125. And then 1 over 125 times 125 is just 1. So that equals 125. So that's true. So yes, um, y equals negative 3. Let me do another example, um, because this was some more of these, just to make sure you understand it. So what happens, let's do this one. ln of e. So whenever you're in a situ situation like this, when you have an ln and an e, and this has an invisible one right here that these are inverses so, so that they cancel the ln and the e so you're left with just the exponents one so you're just left with one what about this one ln of uh, e to the negative five same rule since the ln and e are inverses they cancel and then you're just left with the um, exponent, so you're just left with negative 5. What about this one? Log base, log base 2 of 64 equals y. So I'm going to use the same rule. Um, y equals log base a of x if and only if, and only if, if and only if a to the y equals x. So, um, which way, if we use this rule, which this looks like this, right? So what is our a? Our a is the base, which is 2. What is our y? y is just y. What is our x? It's always inside the parentheses, so it's going to be x equals 64. Now let's put it in this form, a to the y equals x, so a is 2, or y is y, and then equals x, which is 64. Some people can real, um, just say it in your head, um, 2 to the what power gives you 64, and they'll say, oh, that's 6, right? Because 2 times 2 to the 6 equals 64. Some people will be like, some people will get the same, try to put everything in the same base, which is, is okay, right? Well, the 64, we can rewrite it as um, 2 to the 6, right? 2 to the, two to the 6 equals 64. So when you have the same base, you just ignore it and then drop down the exponent. So y equals 6. So either way, which way you want, you could do it this way, get the same base, or just, you could, sometimes you could just do it in your head. So y it's the same answer. You get the same answer. Okay, so let's do now. Let's let's start sketching a logarithmic function. So let's say you're given um. It says sketch the graph of each function and state the domain and range of each function. So this one. 
log base. Okay, so how I graph logarithmic function is I do it step by step. I don't rewrite it. I don't write the whole thing. I don't write the whole thing because I could get I make mistakes. So let's first let's write what we know. We know that okay. So it has here log. It doesn't have a number on the base, right? Whenever you're in a situation like that, it just means the base is always 10. So our base is 10, or um, we know that a equals 10. Whenever it's just by itself, no numbers on the um base, it's just 10. So what do we know if, if it's 10? It's the um log. It's definitely increasing because it's rate. Right, it's increasing. And then what else do we know? We know that because of here x minus 1, there's a phase shift, so, and there's a phase, phase shift on x-axis, on x-axis, and so you, this, and so that means you're going to move one unit, move one unit, not to the left, but to the right, right? Because if you ever get confused, you can set this x minus one to zero, and then you add one, add one. So you're gonna move one unit to the right. That's how, if you ever get confused. So you move one unit to the right, and then let's look at this negative one half. This negative one half means, um. There is going to be a horizontal reflection or horizontal reflection on the y-axis. So horizontal horizontal reflection on x-axis. So let's first let me graph log just let me graph log base. Log base also we also have a vertical asymptote, our VA. So our vertical asymptote, just like the, remember the rational function, you set this x minus one to zero. So it's gonna be x minus one equals zero, you add one. So x equals one. So our vertical asymptote, let me just, our vertical asymptote is x equals one. So first step, I'm gonna graph log base just regular log base x. Here, log base x has a has a y-intercept. Of, I mean, x-intercept of one comma zero. So it looks something like this. So this is just regular y equals log base x. Now let me graph log base x minus 1. So x minus 1, since we're moving, there's a phase shift of one unit to the right. So instead of our x-intercept is not going to be 1. So we move one unit to the right. So it, it was here. Now we're going to move here. So this is going to be 2 comma 0. And then you can draw your vertical asymptote right here. So our vertical asymptote is x equal one. This is important because watch, oops. It'll get really close to this v vertical asymptote, but it'll never touch. So, this see how I never it it'll, it'll never get it'll get really close to one but it never touches so this is y equals um log base x minus one now okay so now let's graph Uh, this just 
this negative one. So this negative one half means it's going to um, horizontal reflection on the x-axis. So it's going to look flipped. It's going to look something like this. So this is your typical y equals negative one half log base log base log x minus one. Okay, so let me re um re make it look nicer on this graph. So we said that it has a vertical asymptote at x equals one. It has an x-intercept of 2 comma 0, so here's 2 comma 0, and then it there's a um, horizontal reflection on the on the y-axis, not x-axis. It's going to look something like this. So this is y equals negative one half log base x minus one. So we said um, state the domain. So our domain is going to be parentheses. It's not going to be zero. It's going to be parentheses one. Uh, one to um, let me think about this. So domain is going to be from we just look at the x-axis. So hold on, it's going to be from negative infinity, right? Because it keeps going down here. Wait, no, x is positive. Wrong. It's um. Yeah, parentheses one, comma, positive infinity. I was looking at the y-axis, that's why. So yeah, the domain is still positive and it's gonna be from one to positive infinity because remember our vertical asymptote? Usually it starts at zero because the y-axis is the vertical asymptote, but in this case there's a sh there was a phase shift. That's why it's from one comma zero, not zero to positive infinity. And the range is just, Let's look at the y-axis. Um, it keeps going positive and then negative. So it's just going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Right? And it, it follows this one of the properties. Um, yep. The range is from negative infinity. Yes. So yeah, do you do you understand that this is um parentheses one to positive infinity because of the um the vertical asymptote and then the phase shift. That's why it doesn't start at zero. It starts at one. Okay, so that's how you graph a logarithmic function. Should I do? Let's do. So it says. It says write the equation of each graph in its final position. So. Let's see. The graph of y equals log base two of x is translated five units to the right, reflected in the x-axis, and then translated. One unit downward. So I made some graphs because I'm going to do it step by step, and then I'm going to write what we know. So we know that there's um. First, we got to write the new graph. So it says. It says translated five units. It's translated five units to the right. So it's going to be a reflect. There's a phase shift on the x-axis. So and it's five units to the right. So it's not going to be x plus five. It's going to be x minus 5 because if you set that to 0, you get positive 5. So we know it's 5 units to the right, and then we know it's, it has a log base of 2, log base of 2, 
And then what else do we know? We know that it's translated one unit downward, so that we know that there's um there's a downward shift. So we know it's a downward downward shift of negative one. So it's going to be minus one. And then it says reflected on the x-axis. Reflected on the x-axis. So um, it's going to be, there's going to be a negative right here. And then just set that to y, y. So this is our new graph. Y equals negative log base 2, x minus 5, minus 1. So because there's a downward shift, negative 1, uh, reflection, uh, phase shift on the x-axis, x minus 1, I mean x minus 5, and then reflection means just put a negative in front of the log. So first, let's look at, the, what do we know? We know the 2, our a is 2, so we know the logarithmic, logarithmic function is increasing. So if it's increasing, it's going to go look something like this. Um, what else do we know? We know that we have a vertical asymptote of a VA of x minus 5 equals 0. So you're going to add 5, add 5. So x equals 5. So here's our vertical asymptote. Okay, so first step, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the graph of log base 2 of x. So so log base 2 of x has an x intercept of 1 comma 0. It's good to um, do this step by step because you can make a mistake easily. So this is the graph of y equals log base 2 of x. And we know since the base is 2, we know it's increasing. So it looks something like this. And we know that the x intercept of log is always just 1 comma 0. Now let's draw let's draw the graph of log base let's draw the graph of log base 2 of x minus 5. So we're going to draw this graph y equals log base 2 of x minus 5. So this will have a vertical asymptote of 5. So here's one, two, three, four, five. Here's five, right? This is our vertical asymptote. X equals five. What do you think our x intercept is gonna be? It originally was one comma five one comma zero, but since we're moving five units to the right, it's gonna be six comma zero. So our x intercept is gonna be six comma zero. And then we know it's just it's increasing, so it's going to look something like this. And it gets really close to the um, vertical asymptote, but never touches. So this is your typical log base to x minus 5 graph. Now, let's do, let's graph a log base. Let's graph log base to x minus 5 minus 1. So now this is a little bit different, but it's, Okay, so we still have the um, vertical asymptote of 5. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's a vertical asymptote. So here we are. Still the same. X equals, this is our vertical asymptote. What is going to be our x intercept? We don't have one anymore because there is a downward shift of negative 1. So it's our new point is going to be since it, this was zero six comma zero, we're moving one unit to on the y axis. So it's going to be six negative one. So here's six comma negative one, right? So here's six comma negative one. So it's it's shifting one unit to the one unit downwards this way. So it will look something like this.
right? It just moved, it just shifted one unit downward. Now let's graph the whole, the whole thing, the y equals negative log base to x minus five minus one. So the only difference is since there's a negative right here, it's flipped. It there's a reflection on the x-axis, so it's gonna it's like folding the paper um like a taco, if that makes sense. So here let me show you. So still there's still a vertical asymptote of five, so one, two, three, four, five. Um, it has, we still have this point six negative one, so here's six negative one, right? Okay. The only difference it's going to flip. It's going to look something like this now. It's like backwards, you know. See, it just flipped it like a taco, and that's why it looks something like this. So yeah, when you graph um, complicated logarithmic functions like base ones, um, just do it step by step, and then just write down what you know. Okay, so let's do 45. I mean, another one. It says write, equa write each equation as an as an equivalent exponential function. So for this one, remember we could go. We have to go back to the same rule. This one, log base y equals log base a x if only if a to the y equals x. So so let me rewrite it again. Y equals log base of a of x if and only if a to the y equals x. So we this graph looks like this. So we can say our a is the base, which is 5. Our y is just y, right? Just y. And our x is just x, right? It's just x. So a to the y equals x. So 5 to the y equals x. And then they said write it in exponential function. So this is probably the most, this is the most um, exponential. We, we don't want to simplify it anymore, right? This Because it's we want it in this form, exponential form, exponential form. We want it in the, this form. So this should be your final answer. What about this one? We have a to the, it says write each equation as an equivalent logarithmic function. This was, this was, they asked you for um, exponential. Now they want this and logarithmic function. So, So which way, which, this one looks like which part? This way or this way? It looks like, this part looks like this, right? This looks like this. So what, we got to make it look like this. So if you look closely to these um, equation, a to the x equals n, what do you think our y is going to be? And what do you think our x is going to be? So we know, remember, this thing is going to be our y. It's going to be our y. And then this is going to be our, our n, right? Wait, yes, yeah, so um, y equals x minus 1. 
and then our n is rx. Yeah, our n is our x. And then what else do we And a is just a, right? This is just a. So what, if we know what we could put it in this form, we said that y is x minus 1 log base of a, which is just a. And then our x is just n. And then you, the book puts this in front, which is the same same way. So you can rewrite it as log base a of n equals x minus one. So yeah, the key is just write this rule down, memorize it, and then figure out which way does it look like. Does it look like this, or does it look like this? And if it looks like this, you have to make it look like this. Or if it looks like this, you have to make it look like this. Okay, so let's do... Okay, so now let's do, for each function, find the f of in, the inverse, f of inverse. So we are given this. To find the inverse, first step is to set this f of x equals y. So I'm going to say y equals 10 to the x minus 1, and then this is 1 half. I'll just rewrite it as 10 over 2 because it's the same thing. And then I'm going to plus 5. Okay, so that's the first rule. Now, the second rule is to switch the x and y. So wherever you see a y, it's going to be an x now. And wherever you see an x, it's going to be a y. So it's going to be x equals 10 to the y minus 1 over 2 plus 5. Now the third step is to try to solve for y. So if I want to solve for y, I'm going to get I'm going to get rid of this too. So I'm going to mul I'm going to use multiply everything by two. So this is going to be um, I'm going to put it right here. Two times x is two x equals the two cancel. So you're just left with ten y minus one, and then plus ten because five times two is ten. Good. Now um, let's get rid of this 10 by subtracting 10 from both sides. So on the left side you have 2x minus 10 equals 10 to the y minus 1. Okay, so remember our goal is to solve for y. So let's solve for, solve for y by... Um, we can take the log of both sides because we want... Remember the rule for logs. Whenever you take the log of something and this is the um, raise it to the exp raise to the exp exponential power, you put that in front of the log. So let me. Sh so I'm going to take logs of both sides. So th on the left side, it's going to be log, and it's just regular log, log of two x minus ten. The log is just a regular base of 10. You can leave it like this, or you could put a 10, because it's the same thing. And then this, when you take the log, remember the log rule? Whenever you have an exponential, you put it in front of the log. So it's going to be y minus 1 log of 10. So... Now our goal is to solve for y. So what I'm going to do is this y. There's a y minus one log ten. So I'm going to add plus one log ten. Add one log ten. So on the left side it's going to be log of two x minus ten plus one log of ten equals y. Now we got y. Can this be simplified on the left? Can this be simplified? Um, no. Can this be si simplified? Yes, because we have log log of 10, right? That's really saying, remember there's an invisible base of 10 right here. That's like saying log 10 to the what power, 10 to the what power will give you 10, right? It'll just be 1. 
and if you put it in the calculator you will get one so if you put log log 10 you're gonna get one because it's like saying 10 to the what power gives you 10 which is 1 10 to the 1 power gives you 10 so let me rewrite it so it's gonna be log base log, I mean log of 2x minus 10 plus 1 and then the final step is where you see wherever you see the y you put just the regular f inverse so yes that this should be your final answer yep there we go so let's do a few more and then we call it we can call it a day so solve each equation find the exact solution so you have a log base of x of 1 over 9 equals negative 2 over 3 so let me write that rule down y equals if and only if a to the y equals x so let's look at this this equation which does it look familiar does it look like this or does it look like this i would say it looks like this so we know what is our base is this x so our a or the base is just x what is our y our y is going to be not just y anymore it's going to be this number negative two thirds because it's on the right or left side right What else do we know? What is our x? It's always inside of the parentheses, so our x is 1 ninth. Now, let's put it in this form, a to the y equals x, or we said our a is x, our y is negative 2 thirds equals x, which is 1 ninth. Okay, so I want my goal, I want to solve for x, because that's what we they we want to know because to find the exact solution. So I'm going to write x to the negative two thirds as the same thing as I'm going to put it in positive power. So I'm going to do one over x to the positive two thirds equals one ninth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to cross multiply. So one time yeah I'm going to just cross multiply. So one times nine is nine. And then 1 times x to the 2 thirds is x to the 2 thirds. So my goal is to solve for x, so I want to get rid of this exponent. So I'm going to raise everything to the 3 half power. Because if you raise, remember you're, when you're raising something, you're multiplying the exponent. So 2 thirds times 3 half is just 1, which is what we want. So the, this side is going to be just x. And then this side is going to be 9 to 3 halves. Let me, so what is 9 to 3 halves? It's really saying um, square root of 9 raised to the third power equals x. So we know that the square root of 9 is going to be plus or minus 3, right? You get two numbers. And then you're going to cube that. So you're going to get positive 27 negative 27 equals x okay so can we get rid of can we factor it out something cancel something out we can get rid of this negative 27 because you cannot have a negative 27 you cannot have a negative base right from and we got that rule from here it says um it a can only be greater than one or it could be greater than zero, but less than one. So it can never be a negative number. So we can only use positive 27. So let's plug it, plug it back in. So I'm gonna put it in here, this equation. So it's like saying log, we said that x is positive 27, log base 27 of 1 ninth equals negative two-thirds so this that's like really saying tw 
27 to the negative 2 thirds because remember now we're, we're putting it we said that our a our base is now 27 right so if we put 27 to this we're gonna we're using the same rule same numbers but our a is 27 and we're putting it in this form so we said our a is 27 our y is still negative 2 thirds and our x is 1 ninth. So we gotta check if this is true. So let me put this in positive. So it's gonna be 27, 1 over 27 of positive 2 thirds equals 1 ninth. Um, 27 to the 2 thirds, it's like saying, um, remember the cube root of 27 and then whatever that number is, you square it. So what is the cube root of 27? Um, that would be, 3, right? And then 3 squared is 9. So this is going to be 1 ninth equals 1 ninth. So that is so true. Yes, because, yeah, the cube root of 27 is 3, and then squared that is 1 ninth. Yeah, so 1 ninth equals 1 ninth. So it's true. So our x is 27, positive 27. So, two more and then we're done. It says, find the approximate solution to each equation. Find round to four decimal places. So, first step is, I'm going to rewrite this 1 over 10x as 10 to the negative x equals 2. So our goal is to solve for x. That's our goal. Can we make it the same base? Can we have a common base? Can we make this as a base of 2 or base of 10? No, we cannot. There's no there's no common base, right? Whenever you're in a switch, common base. Whenever you're in a situation like this, when you can't have no common base, you're going to have to take the log of both sides. So let's take the log of this so remember so there's an exponent so you're going to put that in front of the x from front of the log so it's going to be negative x log log of 10 not base of 10 i mean it does have a base of 10 but it's log 10 log of 2 they both have a base of invisible 10. you can also use natural log if you, you'll get the same answer so we want to solve for x, so I'm going to divide everything by negative, because there's a negative here, negative log 10, negative log 10. So you get x is about, and you can put this in the calculator, you're going to get negative 0 0.30. 10299. They said to round to four decimal places, so here's one, two, three, four, so it's right here. So x is just going to be negative 0 0.3010. Right? So what you, okay. Now, the last step is to check it. So um, what you do is put it in the original equation like this one. So wherever there's an x, you put this. So it's going to be 1 over 10 to the negative 0.3010. And if you put that in calculator, you should get 1.99. 1.99 is really close to 2. If you round it to whole numbers, it's 2. So 2 equals 2. So that's true. So our answer is x equals this whole thing, negative 0.301. Okay, now let's do a continuous word problem. So it says, find the rate of the equation a equals pe raised to the rt, or pert, so that's the continuous problem, continuous rate problem, for r, then 
so we got to find r, then find the rate at which the deposit of 1,000 would double in three years, compounding continuously. So we're going to use this formula. A equals P E raised to the RT. We're going to use PERT. So what do we know? We know our principal is 1,000. We know our air, our amount. It says that 1,000. If you put in 1,000, it would double in three years. So that that means our amount is going to be 2,000. And then we know our time is three years because it says three years. And then we don't know our rate. That's what we want to know. So put in this equation, you get um 2,000. That's our amount equals our principal, which is 1,000 e, and we know that the we don't know our r, so we're going to say r, and then our time is three years. So our goal is to solve for r. So we're going to have to we're going to have to log everything, log both sides, because we want the exponents in front. So before we do the, take the logs of both sides, I'm going to um, get rid of this 1,000. So I'm going to divide everything by 1,000. 1,000. So the zeros cancel. So on the left side, you're left with 2. And then you're left with e to the, uh, we'll call it r3. Now we can take the log of both sides. So on the left side, you're going to take log of 2 equals when you um, bring this in front of the log so it's going to be um, th 3r or r3 is the same thing 3r of log of e so if you put this in the calculator you get you actually get a number you get one point you get, an, you get a really small number, one point something. And if you times it by three, you get 1.30288 of R. And then we want to solve for R, so we're going to divide everything by 1.30288. So our r, if you put that in calculate log log two over 1.3022 you get um 0 0.231049, and then if you remember we want percentage, so you're gonna move it two places to the right. So this is gonna be one two. So you get 23.1 one zero percent and I'm just gonna round it to one plate one decimal place so right is about twenty three point one percent so another way is you could take the ln because ln and log are pretty much the same thing right so over here instead of log you could have done we could take the natural log of both sides this one comes out really not this is a little bit easier but you still get the same answer ln of 3r ln of e. Do you remember what I said? Natural log and exponential are inverses. So if you, this cancels, you're just left with 1. So you're left with 3r, right? You're, and then you're left with ln of 2. You're going to divide 3, divide 3, not r. So r, if you put ln of 2 over 3, you get. You get um point two three one zero four nine, and then if you move it two places to the right, one two, you still get twenty three point one percent. Okay, that so that wraps it up for this section.